Hello everyone, I'd like to share a few thoughts on this uh, book that I've been reading. Uh, I'm only uh, about 20 pages in, uh, past uh, the uh, prologue and introduction of course. But uh, the book is uh, The Unfettered Mind by uh, Tequan Soho. And um, it's a translation that has been recently translated, but um, the author, that is this Zen monk, wrote it basically, wrote these essays, around 1630 uh, odd uh, AD of course. And um, there's some interesting ideas in this. Uh, in The Unfettered Mind, he talks about how, uh, and it, this is a, this is a, uh, a letter book uh, to swordmasters uh, by a Zen Buddhist monk. And he talks about how if the mind is in any particular part of the body, the mind is taken by that part of the body. Um, it's, it becomes the uh, habitation of, of, of the mind. Uh, if one thinks of his hand, if one uses his hand and that's where his moves come from, it's going to be taken by the hand. If uh, one fears basically the opponent, it'll be taken by the opponent. If one fears the opponent, if one fears the opponent's sword, it will be taken by the sword. And basically, you have to place the mind nowhere. Uh, nowhere in the body. That means that wherever your moves come from, it has to be, uh, the mind has to be in whatever part of the body you're using. Instead of in inhabiting a particular part of the body. Like the hand, like the arm, the, the foot, uh, the head. Uh, instead of placing it in one of those places, you... Uh, allow it to move throughout the body. Uh, you allow the mind to inhabit the body in the sense that it can go wherever your moves come from. And um, this doesn't mean that your brain is going to move. <laughs> it, means that, um, it means that the mind can move to uh, concentrating on any part of the body that you would use in a duel, in a fight, uh, whether it be in swordsmanship, or whether it be in uh, martial arts that are purely body-based. And I think that this is the place where uh, it most applies. Is Even though it's a Zen monk riding to uh, swordsmen, uh, those who use the sword and try to defeat opponent, opponents with it, um, it is important to allow the mind to travel throughout the body so that you can use any part of the body in uh, martial arts, in duels. Uh, whether you're holding the sword with your hands or not, uh, the mind must be allowed to move freely. And um, what's interesting about this is that it doesn't just apply to martial arts or swordsmanship using the katana. It applies to life. Um, if we allow the mind to move freely through our ideas, through uh, our very being, our spirit, then we act in accordance with what is necessary at the time. Um, the mind may be seen as inhabiting the brain, and it does inhabit the brain, but it doesn't have to only inhabit uh, our conception of the brain, our conception of the mind. Uh, the mind must be able to move freely throughout the self, the being, the spirit, so that one's thoughts even can come from uh, spontaneity, can come from... Uh, the, the need at the time. And the mind mustn't stop at one of these places, as he talks about. It must not stop at one idea. It must not stop at one time. It must be allowed to move without focusing on one thought, one idea, one, uh, one aspect of reality. It must be allowed to inhabit all aspects of reality and not uh, be, be confined to a single idea to a single ability of the mind, to a single uh, sense, uh, eyes, ears, nose, that kind of thing. It must use all of these at once. The mind must be able to fill up like a balloon, uh, helium into a balloon. It must be allowed to fill up the whole balloon, that is the body, uh, that is the ideology, that is the spirit, um, all at once, uh, instead of focusing on one part of the balloon, uh, one part of the idea a person holds within himself. And I found this incredibly interesting. Um, that's basically all I've uh, all I've got to say about this topic. But 
uh, it's, a, it's an interesting idea that we mustn't allow the mind to uh, be isolated and focus in one place, but be, it, be in all places at all times. Uh, be in all ideologies at all times, in all senses at all times. So that experience itself allows one to become enlightened to the nature of reality and the nature of one's situation at the time. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you wanted a little bit more clarification about the book, it's The Unfettered Mind. Uh, the new translation is by William Scott Wilson, and uh, that's a pretty recent translation of the, uh, of the texts. Uh, and these, these essays were written to a swordsman's and emperor, and uh, I think shoguns as well. And um, this is by a Zen monk, and it really is, a, is an understanding of Zen, not allowing the mind to stop at one place, but to expand in all places. Uh, I've always found Zen very interesting, Zen Buddhism. Uh, and I hope you've uh, I hope you've taken something from this. Uh, if you if you like this video, feel free to hit that thumbs up down there. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for your time.